sit in the front seat. So, oh. <laughs> you're amongst friends. It's okay. To I know. That. I know. Please feel free. <laughs> I, I was wishful thinking, putting the magazines there. There you go. Skirt. Give me a little signal. <laughs> I wasn't really thinking. Okay, okay. Well, good morning, everybody. We're not officially starting yet, but I'll just warm the crowd up. <laughs> Use your jaws, yeah. Thanks for coming. Spending time here. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Michael. Some of my regular students I see are here. <laughs> my regular students. <laughs> All bright, happy, and cheerful. Okay, thank you. I just want to say that in, in the magazine, we do have a page on Shayla's book. Um, and so you'll notice, yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. It was beautiful, Shayla. Thank you. I saw it and I cried. Oh. I really did. It was. It's so beautiful. And well, the layout and what you said. And it's not. It's not a book review per se. It's more about Shayla and how she arrived at really being able to have something to say and put in the book. So. Yeah. And it's a beautiful book. It is. It is. I, I had. Yeah. I had gotten one in the, in the mail and um, holding it was, you know. I feel like I keep hearing about you know books going digital, digital, and I, I think an audio. Well, vi we are visual people, and I, you may be able to read magazines online, but I still think paper and pages for art business and art trade. I think it's it's still where it's at. I mean, can you imagine getting one of these books and looking at it digitally? I mean, no. you, you flip, but like, like you wouldn't be able to savor it. Yeah, at all. You wouldn't be able to savor it. You wouldn't be able to crop with it in your photo shoots and put it on shelves. Yeah, you know. Yes, the quality of the paper. Yes, everything. the quality. Yeah. I mean, you, it's a the sensory the beyond. Quality. It's yeah. also amazing. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. We'll go ahead and get, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Neil McKenzie. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Universal. Uh, if it is your first time in our space, uh, we welcome you. There's a lot to see. Uh, the building itself is 115,000 square feet. Uh, we have a lot going on this week. Um, in the atrium, uh, we have this really cool new designer's lounge concept. There's a uh, beauty bar pop-up in there, so you can get hair and makeup touch-ups. Uh, right now? Uh, starting this afternoon. Uh, <laughs> we also have a killer party tonight. Yeah, uh, killer party. Great party tonight, so I encourage you all to come over and have fun for that. Uh, that starts at 5.30, but if you want to start at 4, it's okay. Um, we uh, also have uh, a lot of new product introductions, as you might imagine, but um, we launched a, uh, a new collaboration with a designer based in Houston, Nia Magan, and that is on floor three. Um, and it's a European uh, modern uh, look and uh, really a, a different perspective for, for Universal. But uh, overall, uh, Universal is a household, uh, or a whole home uh, resource, and uh, there's a lot of different looks throughout the building. So if you do want to go tour, explore, if you want to stay for lunch, uh, just get your badge scanned at the front desk and they'll be happy to kind of let you on your way. Um, we are uh, really excited to be here in the Learning Center. We've, we've hosted a number of events uh, this week in this space, and if you know someone that's interested in hosting something for the fall, or if you yourself are interested in an event, uh, just please uh, get up with me and we can talk about uh, the best way to do that. But this is a great space for talks just like we're gonna have today. Um, we're honored to have uh, Jane Dagman here. Jane, um, we've done a lot of work with, we, Universal, have done a lot of work with Jane and Designers Today, and uh, we've been really pleased, I think, with the direction under uh, Jane's guidance that this book has taken, and uh, it's been a great resource. So if you're not familiar, I would definitely encourage you to do so. And then we're great, uh, very honored to have Christopher Kennedy and Shayla Topas here. They have two new books uh, that are out, and I think this would be a great talk just in terms of how that experience goes from the designer's perspective. So uh, we look forward to sharing that. Uh, with you all, and I'll let Jane take it away. All right. Thanks, Neil. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Appreciate it.
Yeah, we, I, I have enjoyed over the years working with Neil, so, um, and I encourage you to come back to the party this evening because the music is outstanding and it's just a really good vibe. So, um, and I cannot be happier to be with Shayla and Christopher, who I've gotten to know over these few years. I'm going to quickly read their bios. I mean, we all probably sort of know about them, and then we're going to dive right into the discussion. So, um, Shayla. Uh, <laughs> shit, can, is my, my mic on? We're all good, right? You can all hear? Excellent. Okay. Um, national award winning designer, speaker, author, brand ambassador, and philanthropist, Shayla Kopis is one of the South's most acclaimed luxury designers and tastemakers. She's created unique and innovative interiors for an array of residential, commercial, and event clients throughout her more than 20 year career. Her work has been featured in print regionally and nationally, and her first book, Four Seasons of Entertaining, is out as of this spring. <laughs> Yay! Um, <laughs> her show, Southern Glam, um, showcases her glitz and glam style, can be seen on the Design Network, and she also appears regularly on Good Afternoon Arkansas. She served on numerous nonprofit boards during her career. If anybody knows her, that's one of her big what motivates Shayla is giving back. Um, she won the Philanthropist of the Year Award in 2017 from the Women's Foundation of Arkansas and has been instrumental in raising more than four million dollars for a variety of organizations and causes. So, yay, Shayla. Um, Christopher Kennedy is also a philanthropist and he's been to Palm Springs to his show house um, that raises money for preservation don't all raise your hands. I mean, I, I like, I want, I have not been, and I am. It's like we need to have a trip. To I know, put right? it together. I am going to go. I hate um, it's okay. every day. Right, okay, we follow it. Well, maybe next year we'll all join you, Christopher. Um, a golden state of mind describes Christopher Kennedy's philosophy towards interior design and life. Combining jet set nostalgia with California modernism, Christopher's work has been featured in Dwell. California Home and Design, Lux, Traditional Home, and the Los Angeles Times. From his retail store base in Palm Springs, this prolific designer produces decorator showcase houses and also creates several licensing collaborations. He is the author of two books, California Modern and Making Mid-Century Modern. So yay, Christopher. Okay. So first I just want to ask, is there anybody in the room who has already authored a book? Okay. Don't raise your hands. Okay. So I'm assuming that many of you are here because you think, hmm, I might like to do a book someday. Yeah? Okay. Is there anybody in the audience that is in the book publishing business? Okay. So it's, it's interesting. Neil had invited you basically to, if you have an idea, right, to come. Maybe next, next uh, market we can make it a reality. The book publishing world, from what I've learned, it's not like that. Nobody invites you. It's it's much much harder. And so these two have you know the patience and the ambition and and the skill set to to get it done. Um, so I'm just going to quote something really um, briefly. Writing is the incurable itch that possesses many. How many have that itch? All right. So I want to know from Shayla and Christopher about your itch. When it's <laughs> scratch your itch. I mean, but no, was it? I mean, did you? I didn't, I didn't expect. Uh, okay, but no. When when did it come? And how did you? What were your first steps towards satisfying that itch? I would say ladies first. But really, <laughs> satisfying the itch. Well, I had always. I think like a lot of people wanted to write a book. I would always wanted to do that. Um, and mine kind of came or in an organic way. Do you want me to tell the background story? Or sure. just wh why I itch? Well, why yeah, I so you always wanted to do a book because you wanted to express what? You wanted to get, okay. bring what? It's a very generous because act to do a book, to put it out there. Because I wanted to help others to learn how to entertain. And at first, actually, it was going to be a book on um, my designs and kind of talking about tips on design. But the publisher said, you know, pitch us something else because we have a ton of books like that. So we want something yeah, that's, that's so more like a steward. 
We want to they they wanted they wanted a, a Martha Stewart better Betty Williams type book from me. I, I think I think it's different with everyone else. I mean, they looked through what I had and they said we want something different. So that's my itch. And Christopher, you have two books. I do. Yes. My my itch started uh, in high school. Um, I would say. <laughs> So uh, actually, I've always been interested in writing. I won like English awards in school, and it was always something that I enjoyed doing that I knew I was good at. But I think we don't always have a chance to express that necessarily in our daily lives as interior designers. I never did a blog. I'm really not that hip. I'm not really like an early adopter. So I mean, I guess like you know, we could. Does anyone out there like blog or write? Anyone in the audience? Because that's writing and that's mm -hmm. expressing yourself. So that's certainly. Um, you know, very important and very valid. I never did write. I was, kind of, I was just busy building my business, you know, making beautiful images that we combined into a book. So it was just kind of something I always wanted to do. It was on my to-do list. I know I've done it, but I, I do enjoy writing. So for me, the best part was to kind of get that outlet, that part of my personality out there. Right. And so, okay, you've, you've got this desire. Who do you go to? What, who did you turn to to just start to get the ball rolling and say, help, can you help me? Did you... People, I know you spoke with another author, and can you tell a little bit about that? Well, I was actually featured in a book of another author. So there's an author named Patricia McMillan, and she contacted me out of the blue on Facebook through private message, and said, you know, I'm writing this book on Christmas design, and I've, I looked you up, and I thought that, and weren't you were in that, you were in that book too. No, thanks for rubbing. <laughs> 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 that. Well, you said. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, because there were Every year I still do trees for my clients, and no one ever calls me about being in the <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll hook you up next okay, year. Okay, please. <laughs> She reached out out of the blue, and she had about 20 designers that she was featuring in this book. And I thought that it was a scam. I mean, because why would someone just call me? I mean, just, just send me a DM and say, hey, I want to feature your work, and I'm writing this book. Can we sign more? Doesn't that show how we all doubt ourselves <laughs> as designers, yeah, whether it's charging true. what we're worth? Hold her panel, Jane, I'm sorry. I know, no, but, but I think... Whether it's charging <laughs> what we're worth I'm or, ready for you know, this. like... It's, exactly. we all but I think it's also, we're trained a little bit to think that people want something like... Yeah, I mean, a little true. bit like, what do they want? What do they really want? What um, is this really? Right. So I, I, I asked her several questions, and it was for real. And she said, send me some images, and we'll see if your images will fit the brand of the book. So I sent her the images, and it worked out. And I actually ended up on the cover of her book. My, my work did. And she flew in. We had a book signing when it came out, and we became friends. And she said, you know, I really think you need to write a book. And I had the itch, and I always wanted to write the book. And I didn't answer that question right. I was kind of in school. I always, when the teacher would ask me a question, I didn't really get into it. I would kind of go where I wanted to go. So sorry about that. But um, <laughs> I know, I'm the rebel. I'm just the rebel. But anyway, with um, Patricia, she said, I really think you need to write a book. So let me introduce you to my publisher. So she introduced me through email, and we went back and forth, and then we had a phone call, and they said, you know, my idea was to publish a lot of my, I actually had a lot of event design, some major event design over the years that I had um, put together, but it was more commercial. And they said, we just really don't want that. So then I came back with what I said earlier, my design work, and they said, we see a lot of that. We, we really think you fit in that kind of Martha Stewart-y kind of, Area. And I had never really pictured myself like that, but I always entertained. And, um, and, I, and they said, but you're going to need all new content, and we want it in a year from the time you sign your contract. That is really tight. So that's how that all went, and um, we just kind of went from there. But we did, we pitched back and forth, so it is a pitching process. It's a long process. Coning. What was yours like? Yep. So. Uh, my process, so the first book, California Modern, um, so I'll tell you the story. So I was actually here at High Point. I had a publicist, or a, 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 someone I was thinking of hiring to do PR for me and to show her my work. I'd gone like on Shutterfly or something and just made like a stupid little book on it. Because you can do these things online now, if you know how. I didn't know how, but like someone 
help me. And so I'm a slow learner, like I said, and not like a, um, so I just have this little book. And she's like, Christopher, this is great. And we were at a show where I'm here in Highway. She's like, this could be a book. And I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. And she actually helped me uh, publish it. So we, we actually, I uh, self published it. And the amazing thing was no one really cared that it wasn't Rizzoli or Schiffler or Gibbs Smith. So the first book we just did it ourselves. So we, I mean, I had all the pictures over my career of 10 or 12 years. I think I wrote like four pages. I didn't scratch that itch that time just to get it done. So you already I'm a had graphic the designer laid it out. We have the content. So it was kind of like a retrospective on my first 10 years of my firm. And it was just arranged each chapter as a house and it just showed, you know, where it was. And, I have a question. Yes. Just because you had the content. But I didn't, had the content. But, but did you own the content or did you have to buy it from those photographers or magazines? Uh, that's a good question. It had not been shot by the magazines. I probably couldn't have used those photos. So largely we owned them. I did contact the photographers and got their permission. Uh, most of them didn't charge me uh, any usage because they were you know, happy for me and happy to be in it and lovely because that can be hugely expensive. So we did own the content or got permission to do it or both. Um, so that was your first one, self-publishing. Oh, and we'll one. talk a little bit later about um, yeah. some of the budgets and all the work that went into that. But yeah. with Gib Smith, how did that connection uh, happen? Gib Smith, so about a year later, uh, a store owner in Palm Springs called me that this uh, publisher, Gib Smith, and she contacted him about doing a book on mid-century design. He's like, I'm not a designer, I just own a store that sells design. Uh, and he recommended me, so it was really, I guess I got lucky. Uh, yeah, so Gibbs Smith wanted a kind of how-to book on mid-century design and found out, I guess, I was the guy to go to. And it went from there, and we did it very fast. They, I think that happened in the late spring. We wanted to launch it during, during Modernism Week in February. Uh, so we shot all the photos over the summer. I called my stepbrother who's a photographer. He's a lot of my photography. Luckily, it's good to have someone in the family. Uh, and we did it in about, we shot, I just like brought him out from LA. Uh, our clients tend to be gone in the summer so we could have access to the houses, but it was like 115 degrees. Uh, we're in these houses. It looks glamorous, hopefully, in the book. Uh, but, you know, like we couldn't touch any of the accessories outside. We're sweating, dying, but uh, we just kind of banged out the photography in four to six weeks, because so they wanted to launch it, actually have it done and launched in less than a year. Um, I did the writing, I turned the writing in in August, and they printed it, and we released it in February. Mm -hmm. And how many of you would feel confident <coughs> writing your book? That's great. Um, so did, there's a, a formal way that publishers expect to be um, queried of, and, and yes. given a proposal. Did you have to um, submit that? Uh, or I did have to submit a sample chapter, uh, sample photos, absolutely. So yeah. that's the, just yeah. what the, the basic, um, when you're submitting to a publisher, you basically have to come up with a table of contents, so what your whole book is about, sample chapter, and about 20 photos that show what that book is going to look like. So that's kind of the general um, thing. And, and of course, publishers generally, if you go to their sites, they will say, you know, we will not, if we're interested, we'll contact you. So, um, or we're, we're not even taking any um, queries except if you have an agent. As, as well, um, so there are that, those are some of the bigger, bigger houses. These are more yeah. a little more intimate um, companies. But what about you? Did you submit the the normal the chapter? And, no, I did not. We negotiated the deal and signed the contract based on the pitches back and forth, mm -hmm. and it went from there. So can we talk a little bit about negotiating the deal? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what what points? were you negotiating? Is Did you get an advance? I did not get an advance. Did they give you a photography budget? No. Okay. <laughs> so, this is I, the sad part of the story. Yeah, You'll get better at the end. Yeah. Yeah. We'll try to end on so, a high like, note. Is, I mean, have to is, dive into. Well, but, yeah. go, go ahead. No, it's a beautiful book. I'm just, it, yeah. And, yeah. and so, but Shayla's, to get this done, was a labor of love and everything. So. I had a photographer that agreed to do it at no charge, as long as I put her name on the front of the book. 
And so that is how I accomplished that, is I negotiated with her. She had not ever had a national publication, or she, she had not ever had a national book, and so I thought that would be the way to put her name on the map. Mm -hmm. And so that, basically marketing. Is she uh, from Arkansas? She is from Arkansas, and she was here yesterday for a book signing, so she was able to get the accolades from the book and sign as well. Now, Christopher, you had a photography budget I, like from Gib Smith. I did, so I'm, I'm an open book. I, that was a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's still like 7 a.m. Pacific, you realize that. Okay. Uh, so... What was the question again? Budget. They gave budget. You budget. Oh, yeah. yes. Always the eternal budget. Uh, so Gibbs gave me, uh, so uh, so they actually paid me $7,000 to do the book. Um, I got As an advance? No, so that was all. The full thing. total. That was the total. Okay. Yeah, that was the whole thing. So you don't get rich doing a book, people. Uh, but I got half an advance and then half what I turned in, the manuscript, and they gave me a $12,000 budget for photography. Which is not a lot of money, as you know, as a magazine. I mean, you know, these photographers charge two to three to four thousand dollars a day, right. and I had to shoot about, I think it was eight to ten new houses. Mm -hmm. So luckily, I could wrangle my stepbrother into doing it. I had someone in the business. I mean, he came out, he stayed with me, and we shot for two months for that budget. Um, but then I did all the post production for that budget as well. So um, I know lots of designers. I was talking to uh, Jeff Andrews last night, who just launched a book. Um, this market, and yeah, I mean, he paid for all of us, um, almost all of his own photography for that book in Rizzoli. Yeah. yeah. I, um, 10%, and then it increases to 20% based on the book sales. So it's a royalty yeah. over the entire course of it selling. Um, so that was what we That's, negotiated. And are you on royalties with Gibbs Smith, or was it a flat? No, I'm actually. <laughs> Um, they just, just went to like a second printing and I didn't get paid yet, so I guess I should probably, probably I should make, make that phone call, shouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe we should maybe we should go with Schiffer next time. Although that maybe. is a beautiful book. Oh, yeah. thank you. I don't like the covers of like yours, I like, but I like thank the cover. you. I think it's not readable. And I told so. You guys, can you read this cover? Be honest. No. Can you really? Yeah. What, well, what stands oh, out? Okay. It's I, think it's, I think it's a super clever title. If I could be super humble, yeah. but. Um, I'm like, they can't read it. And they said that our sales team really loved it. Okay, thank you. You're making me feel so much better right now. It's really good. So, uh, I know. And it's embossed. And they're like, but it's embossed to be able to read. That makes it Yeah, because it's a narrow subject matter, I think that, I think that, well, that helps it sell as well. Well, just because you just brought it up, yeah. let's just go right to cover design because okay. I just, so, you know, um, don't judge a book by its cover. That does not work in book sales because no. we are going to judge it by its cover and go to it by its cover. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, actually, I want to just read, before, before I hear from you, I want to read what Shayla's publisher said about the cover because it's very, very good so in here. Okay. So, her, the marketing director at Schiffer, yeah. Beautiful. Um, page 54. Read along with me. I think of a book's cover as the outfit one wears when they need to make a killer first impression. The cover should be enticing and convey to the reader what the book is about um, and what they may feel. That is why it's crucial for cover designers to understand the book so they can use color layout and balance to bring the cover to life. So, um, and Shayla, I'm going to go with you first. I, I feel very honored that I was part of the cover nominating <laughs> process. Um, talk about. Do we your want to cover. talk about what how we got to that point? Well, I want to talk about <laughs> how you. Well, you wanted to ask a few people that you respected and trusted yes. about the cover. Yes. Yeah, so I actually, um, and if I'm going ahead, you can stop me or put a band aid. Okay. <laughs> Take some this off. But I actually, I did not the. So in my contract, it said they would lay out the book that the publisher would. But I just really didn't trust that it would be on brand. So I paid for my own layout person. And she laid out the book. And um, she gave me some, some options on the cover. But then after we, and I, I went with what she suggested. But then about three weeks later after I turned in the book, the publisher came and said, oh, we've got some great ideas for a cover. And they all had, like, me on them. And I said, why, are, why am I on your cover? Why, why are you guys trying to change it? Because nobody knows who I am. 
I don't think that that's really beneficial. And putting it on a cocktail table, I don't really think people want to put Shayla Copas on the cocktail table. Do they want pretty floral? Do you agree as designers who put books in places for photography? I mean, look at that, right? You want they don't, they don't care about me. Exactly. They really don't. They care about the content of the book. And so I happened to be at the designer experience at that time, and I had a little moment, and I was kind of freaking out a little bit. I said to Jane, I said, can I have your eyes and your heart and <laughs> friendship? <laughs> and so I went over with a gluten-free pizza. It's like 11 o'clock at and night. 11 o'clock at night and um, ate the whole thing in front of her. <laughs> I was nervous. I had nervous eating. And and had her flipping through their suggestions. I said, now just give me your honest opinion. Do you think that I'm wrong for trying to stick with this? Because, you know, she's in the publishing world and she would know. And we still went back at them with this and said, look guys, this is how we really feel. And they ended up agreeing to allow us to go with our original decision. But there was a little bit of pushback on that. No, I mean, and I, thank you. It is so luscious you, and even I mean the <laughs> spine, me. you know, the colors. I mean it's gonna pop right. wherever you put it. And um, yeah, I I uh, had a you know it's always easier to figure out what you don't like about things than what you you like. It's easier to verbalize that. And I could verbalize what I didn't like about the other co covers. I mean again, I agree she's like you're pretty and to put you on a cover is great, but but you're also knowing who you are you don't like, you you like limelight in a way, but you don't like it too much. And you're, you know, so for your first book, I think it was a good decision. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for putting up with me for an hour of pizza. Well, I just knew, I just, <laughs> I, love I, I always said, now you'll just tell people that she ate a whole pizza, you know, like, cause you, yeah, she, this girl eats. <laughs> Christopher. Um. <laughs> I wish I'd gone to the committee for the cover. I should have thought of that, but I'm always cool. open. I now I, know. I would love next, to the next yeah, one. Cover so committee. I just went with what they said. I still am not 100 percent with it, but thank you for me. <laughs> but the inside, so uh, Gibbs did lay out the inside of the book for me. So and I was super nervous about that because I'm super picky about that. I have graphics mm -hmm. teams as well who are amazing, like you do, Shayla, and uh, I that she just really nailed it. So. Um, it's worth it. And most books, publishers, they will, they do yeah, they give you a layout team, and they yeah. do give you that. You know, Shayla chose not to do it, but they, they do it. And then, in, yeah. in your cool. case, Christopher, yeah, so, so how many back and forth? Like, do you, so do they um, get the whole thing done, or give you some samples and get your feedback on it? Uh, I think they sent me like so. I chose to write the book as a hundred tips. Are we that part of the conversation again? Go, go ahead. Sure. We'll go into it. Uh, so. When I was like, what am I going to write about? Um, and in some ways, I think it's hard to, because like, we shot all new photography. So, I mean, I knew I had things I wanted to say, but also, in ways that I kind of knew, like, the photo would drive what I was going to write about, or how, you know, the shoot evolved would drive really what, what the copy needs to be. Uh, and I chose early on to lay it out as 100 tips. I just said, uh, you know, I don't really have the bandwidth or the attention span, I think, in our kind of snack bite society people or you know have short attention spans and I said I don't think anyone wants to read chapters and chapters. I mean I mean I have all my good friends books. I haven't really read a single word to be honest. So I said, you know, <laughs> let's just make it easy so it's a big font. People can pick it up. They can enjoy five or six mm -hmm. tips and then put it back. So like, I chose to write a hundred tips. About sixty two tips saying I'm like, who said a hundred is the magic number? Like <laughs> what makes that so great? Like What's wrong with you know? 59 tips to make a century design, right? So to get to the hundred was a bit of a marathon, Shayla. You're absolutely right. Um, but we did get yes. there. We did get to 100. And the layout. I mean, I didn't really have hardly any changes. I, the the uh, graphics person at Gibbs Smith just nailed it. So the inside, mm -hmm. I was really happy with. Um, so just I'm curious. Uh, Open your book, past the cover, the end papers. What, what's your end paper? Are you solid? Are you, you know, the, 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 I don't know this part. The, 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 oh, um, guys. Yeah, those guys. Right. Okay, so you have a pattern and you have flowers. Yeah. And do you pick that? Do you pick a pattern or do they I just do that? Didn't, they just kind of They did just that. did that. We did I'm that. sounding really late safe right, right now. Just I mean, she, Shayla that. clearly, Shayla, you know, had, was interested in <laughs> making sure that her brand was yeah. on and, yeah. and had much more control over the book. And, you know, and she also, um, she had, you know, figured out what it was going to cost and, and you could do it. I mean, you could do it, but you did 
finance, you know, it was a lot of your time. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing a book, what happens to your clients? <laughs> that's a really good question. Uh, I think that's, I mean, to really have to ask yourself, like, what is it that you want to gain? I mean, I spent a whole summer writing and taking photos and not serving my clients, and that's a huge trade-off, because your time, we charge for our time, right? So how many, how much do you charge per hour, and how many hours are you putting into this book? And yeah, I mean, there is a true cost associated uh, with it, even if you're not paying for photography. Um, your time is certainly valuable. Well, we, we worked with our clients during this time. It was difficult. Um, you know, I wrote, I actually wrote the book during a certain portion of, towards the end, and I shot all the content on the front end because you have to figure out what you're going to write about, right? Yeah. And we laid it out before I even wrote it. Like with like placeholder, what's that called? What's that stuff called? The like fake yeah. text degree? Yeah. Oh, dummy text. Yeah. The dummy text. You yeah. It's called dummy text. You did the dummy test. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, and so then I wrote it after we laid out the book. So four seasons of entertaining. So that already gives a structure to the book, right? Four seasons. So within, um, was it clear to you from the beginning how you were going to structure it? Like, did you? I mean, four. You came up with the name, but was it then? I'm going to have how many um, events per season do you have? Four events per season. Sixteen chapters. And, and yes, I did. I did know that I was going to shoot 16 chapters, and they and they're themed like Kentucky Derby, Sir Sucker Social, Christmas, and then we brought in chefs for recipes, and then my recipes are in there as well, and culinary contributors. So Shay Gear is in as well, and her home. So I wanted to bring in some industry folks because I think it's good to collaborate and try to help each other and and bring their great work to the light. So I have a question, because I have an idea for a third book, and Gibbs wants me to do a third book. Um, and I've actually been saying no for a year, because like I just have to work. But I actually want it to be a bit more lifestyle, as we launch lifestyle products and licensing things. I love your concept. So they're actually pushing back, and they're wanting it to live in the, so they're kind of doing the opposite of your publisher. They're wanting it to stay up on the design shelf at Barnes & Noble, if anyone still buys books at Barnes & Noble, but they're really giving me quite pushback because I'm seeing it more lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, I like entertaining and I kind of want to have events. Mm -hmm. But actually, that's also why I've been stalling on it because like, well, then I have to actually, you didn't just write a book, you actually produced 16 events. I did. And got people <laughs> and time and there's fashions. Like, it's a huge Yeah, effort. it's like the 16 photo shoots. And not just homes, people, Some of them food. were actual events, and then some of them were staged okay. with models. Um, but actually, we only have models for one chapter, and then all the rest were my friends. I think they were <laughs> they were good friends for showing up to each and every one of those yeah. e events. But just the time to do those invitations and then all that good time. Yeah. You know, I just want to, um, so what, what, again, what your publisher, I want to say, I reached out to four uh, publishing houses for, remember I said a little bit about it's not easy to get in. I'm an editor, a lot of people like to talk to me. I reached out to four publishing houses before this to get some good information. I heard from one. Um, so it's hard for even me to get like them to speak. I, you know, I think either they're just very busy, but speaking to what you just said about Gibbs Smith and to what um, Shale's publisher said, um, Shayla's publisher said, in general, in a world of House, Pinterest, and Instagram, a design book has to be more than a collection of pretty pictures. It needs to educate as well as inspire with a firm grasp on its audience. So, point of view and, and something that you're, that you're offering. Um, just so Christopher has 100 tips, how many recipes do you have? We have around 65, I believe. And Shayla learned a little too late that there is such a thing as a recipe tester, or like a cook's there kitchen, is. so she, what did you do? Well, they came back and they said, did you test all of them? Because because of the chefs. So, you know, these chefs are very advanced. And they said, as an average person, have you made them? And I said, well, no. And they said, well, you're going to have to make all of them. Oh. So I did. Yeah. <laughs> and now, that, that will... Did they all make the cut then? Or did you I actually them? had to delete some of the recipes because they didn't work for me as the average person. And so, but Chelsea helped. My daughter's here today and she, it was a family effort. And then I brought in a chef as well 
to help me in the kitchen kind of figuring out how to make some changes. And we sent a letter to each and every one of the chefs saying that we might have to make some changes based on them. We, it, it needs to be approachable mm -hmm. to the average person. Four words. People feel ever. lazy now. Feel <laughs> like well, what's the crowd are yeah. <laughs> Well, you have book number three. Oh, that's so, right. you know, that's you right. can you prove yourself after two. Well, so. so, Christopher, in um, this second book, did some, in your first book, did you have somebody write the foreword? Was there a foreword? Uh, I'm sorry, Celery wrote uh, a yes. foreword. Um, Ross Matthews wrote the foreword. My friend Ross Matthews is um, a, a comedy guy. And second and one. wrote some um, like uh, like a, a testimonial. Yeah. Sally Kimmel. Yeah. And um, and then Barkley wrote in your second book. Yes, Barkley did the foreword for the second. So do you just you know call up, text, email Barkley and say, would you write this? Like what? As far as like who's sort of vouching for you as a friend? You're supposed to do it yeah. for us, right? We just have to. You're at a cocktail party one night at Barkley. That's how everything starts. We just have to talk our friends into <laughs> helping us. You know, luckily. We have the press, so yeah. Right, so you had, and Shayla, you don't have a foreword in your book. You kind of go right into the introduction. And why did you decide not to have one? Well, it was my first book, and I just, I just selected to work on my dedication and my acknowledgments. So she's, in, in her book, there's also at the back, is it all the people that contributed? Because it was, as we have determined, a giant um, production doing her book, so, and people letting her into their homes and properties and, and all that. Um, so, you, you skipped it. Um, okay. Oh, let's see. So we talked about time and money. Okay. Marketing your book, because this is really where it's at. Um, you know, book publishers are interested in people for their point of view, for their expertise, but also what can you bring us? What new audience? What are you going to do? It's not... It's a lot up to these these people to market their book, and it starts before you even publish the book, pretty much before it's available. Um, but what are some of the ways, Christopher? Like you said, you wanted your book to come out before modernism. Yes, that's, that was important. Right. But what are some of the ways that you market your book, and who helps you as well? Uh, I feel like not very well at the moment. Uh, I didn't well, do like your a book big. Came out I didn't well. do like a big book tour. Like book tour, and a lot of other people like. Like, like I'm Michelle News Bomber did a huge tour and went to all these cities. I just, um, I mean, Gibbs didn't have the budget for that. They weren't going to send me on this huge book tour. Well, let's talk about that. Yeah. I mean, as far as book tours, so they didn't right. have a huge budget. So it's kind of up to you to yeah. figure out what's going to work. Right. So I've done, you know, signings, obviously, at trade shows like this, um, you know, Vegas, High Point. Um, we did something in L.A. Uh, we sold them at, 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 at uh, our showcase house in Palm Springs, and, and which was great. I just sort of sat there and held court on the patio, and we have like, you know, like 6,000 guests walk through the house in a week, so I sold a fair number of books just being there. Yeah, so. But as far as here, so do, um, companies that you work with, you know, shows, mm -hmm. no, nobody yeah. has written a book yet, so, you know, once Absolutely. you have a relationship, you, you yeah. pitch the idea. Like, when I had my first book, I did signings at a Phillips Collection, and I'll, uh, Zuo, okay. I did the sign of Zuo, um, and Wendover now. For us, I work with a great R four, so we'll have events at Wendover. Um, Which there's I have one, one actually today. after this. Yes. <laughs> um, but, yeah. How about you, Shayla? Shayla, how about you? Because I hired a publicist, and um, our, my Schiffer did not have the budget either. Yeah. And normally, when it's your first book or even second book, they're not going to pay for it. They, it's up to us. Right. And so I am on a pretty aggressive book tour this year, and we're traveling the U.S. Um, but we're concentrating on the South because this is a Southern book. Um, we're going to Atlanta, Dallas, Charlotte, and so on and so forth. Ne Neiman Marcus, we teamed up with Neiman Marcus and with Bloomingdale's, and that's... Was really that difficult to get in? I mean, did you send them a book? How did you... Uh, Send them the, we sent them the digital, mm -hmm. is how we approached it. Because we didn't have the books in hand yet when we started scheduling the book tour, so we had to send them a digital. And then just if you're working with a, a big store like that, I, mean, I would think that it's probably a little bit easier to work with like people in your smaller stores and things. I see, I see some um, retail people that have boutique specialty stores that might have book signings, but to work with a big company like that, do you, do you have to fit the bill for whatever, if you have you know, champagne, some rosé with it and all that, is that all on you? 
No. Oh. So their events people handle all that, and and it's it's best to work with their PR and their marketing team because they love to put on events. They're they're looking for things just like magazines are looking for content. That's a good point. That people is a really good content. Yeah. They need events, they need and content, to bring new audience too. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just we talked about it. You and Eric Ross, who's you're also doing things with other um, author design, design. Yeah, people. we're doing one event in um, Dallas. We were going to do some others, but then we decided to do one event in Dallas. I was asked by Coco and Dash to come in and have an event in their store, and so I thought, you know, and, and Eric and I were going to work on some other projects, um, but that particular company had not they. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, it, it hadn't come to fruition for both of us with that particular company because some, they had had some changes within the structure of the company. And so then we decided just to move forward on some other aspects of the tour. But it's good to team up with other authors. I mean, anytime you can promote someone else, it's not all, I, I always believe it's not all about us. And anytime you make it about a, another person or a group of people, I think things are more, I think an event's more successful. Okay. The strength of numbers, absolutely. Yeah. Well so yeah. we're gonna go on tour again. Okay, I'll try it I'll come to the side. So what, again. so now that this process is, is, well, the marketing is really just beginning. I mean, now the selling of it is, is the, really where her publisher is gonna be, be looking at things and you're gonna be looking and, um, and, uh, um, what was I going to say? <laughs> I'm like, was it? Oh, it's so Amazon. I know what I was going to say. It's on, it's on Amazon. It is on Amazon. Oh, that's, you know, I was just... We talked about the pricing on Amazon. I was going to yeah. ask about... And how it's yeah. got the price on the desk. The Actually, yeah. Like, so, uh, your books are both very well priced on Amazon. What is your cover price here? Our cover price is 35 and on Amazon, I believe it's... Twenty-seven eighty. Yes, I bought it. Oh, yeah. see it in person. And what is your cover price? Uh, Fifty dollars. Yeah, this is this. I think it's thirty-three. That, is what they're selling it for. That I could not wow. believe. I mean, I I have to. It's sad. But if you want a signed book today for fifty dollars, <laughs> I will sign it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that was just a huge discount that I could not believe. Because then, anyway. How do you um, get it on Amazon? How do you get it on oh, Amazon? Uh, so you go into Amazon and you just type in Shayla Copas or Christopher. No, I mean, are you saying how to? Oh, that's we, probably oh, the, how publisher. the publisher. The publisher does that, but it's an interesting thing with Amazon. So you want to set up an author's page when you get a book with um, on Amazon because if you set up an author's page, then you get more traction and you can look at the analytics, which is really cool and see how your book's selling and what regions of the U.S. it's selling in the best and that helps you with your book tour. And so. that's something that you do, that you can yeah. do. I'm a, sure. I like yeah. to analyze everything, so mm -hmm. I'm a, I like to research. So I've already set that up and we've been looking at how it's going and even though it's not public yet, so you guys are actually actually going to get the first opportunity at market. It won't go out until it's on pre-sale, and it won't go out until the 28th of April. Um, but we can see how it's going. It, they'll 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 show us those analytics. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. So you've both you finished two. You won. Moving forward, what is there something that you would definitely not do? Um, what is something that you learned moving forward that you don't want to repeat? Gentlemen first. Mm, okay. yeah. uh, or I think it kind of you know stay true to your voice in every sense. Like I wish I maybe been you know more vocal about the cover, maybe gotten more involved in the process. I think uh, just seeing you know the you know like how detailed Shayla took everything, and maybe uh, I would kind of get more involved in the process a little bit. And I didn't realize what these back pages were, or what, what's that called again? End paper. End paper? Okay. Um, yeah, you know, and there's, oh, I guess there's a lot more I should learn about writing a book, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> in the process. Was. I think um, it's a great response. Yeah, it is a great response. Yeah. Like, here's the pictures, here's my writing. There's so much more I guess that goes into it than I realize. So now my eyes are a bit more open in how much it really can go into it if you want to. Mm -hmm. I love that. What about you? I would start, um, so I collect words. It's kind of odd. You collect words? I collect words. I do too. Do you? Uh -huh. Really? Yeah. Do you put them on sticky notes? I got yeah. index cards and yeah. tape them behind my computer. 
Okay. So we collected words, and I would start collecting my words earlier because, you know, I, I, I fit the writing in into a month and a half period. And that's a very short time for writing. Um, so I literally had to put myself in my office day and night, and I actually slept in our guest house, which is where my um, office is, mm -hmm. uh, to stay away from anyone that might distract me from my writing process. Meaning my husband, too. I sent him to Alaska. So, you know, I really think this is a good time that you go on a trip. And he said, but it's 4th of July and we're always together for the holidays. And I said, yeah, but I think you'll just have so much fun. Take a group of guys with you and enjoy. And I got so much done in the week he was gone to Alaska. <laughs> I love him so much, but I'm just going to tell you. No, I hear you. Yeah, I'm, I hear you. Um, I would love to open it up to Q&A for these wonderful people. Or So, questions? What, what's, what's the true cost of the book? Like, you were to buy, buy a cake for yourself, how much do you end up? Uh, my author price is like wholesale. It's like half of the retail. So you're getting a better price than me. Uh, mine is 45% at this point off. Uh, plus they're paying for shipping, but they're going to take that shipping away in a couple months. So I bought a bunch of books. Nicole? Who are the publishers that we should be, what's like the top five that we should be reaching out to in this industry? See, the top five for nobody who's written a book here before, I wouldn't reach out to the top five. Well, not those who don't even right. turn your so, what, so let me, what I was going to uh, actually give you all are some really good sites that will start to right. kind of get you into it. Um, the Literary Marketplace, The Writer's Market, The Author's Guild. Amen. Sure, I'll say it again. And Publishers Weekly is always a great... Okay. magazine to just check. I'm not exactly sure how deep or if you're limited to articles on that sort of thing, but I think to start to look at what publishers are looking for, what agents, if, if that sort of, you know, you're thinking maybe I would like to get in. Agents typically will not um, charge you like uh, money. They, they work off your royalty. Okay. So, you know, you're, you're like that. Um, so I had said literary marketplace the Writer's Market, the Author's Guild, and there are books at Barnes and Noble, and we keep, you can tell how old we are, but um, at least I'm not saying borders. <laughs> but um, uh, on, you know, the Writer's Marketplace, they usually have a 2018, 2019 edition, and those don't change that often. Okay. Um, but Gib Smith, I mean, go to, go to a bookstore, look at the, at who, what, Books are out there. Schiffer, Gibsmith, Thames and Hudson. Okay. Abrams is doing a nice job right now. I think Abrams. Abrams is. is. If you go to their website right now, they're like, don't send us anything unless you have an agent. So Abrams, Rizzoli, um, Random House. Um, there are there are companies that if you figure out a great way to get something done, like Pointed Leaf Press and Asuline does a lot where, and even Schiffer, they'll they'll make a book for you. I mean, they'll. They'll make a book for you if you can finance it and figure out creatively how to do it. But also, like Christopher, you said, figure out why you want to do it. What, what do you have to say? You know, are you an expert in something? What, what do you have to say that's different? Schiffer is actually looking for content right now because, uh, but they, they really have, they like narrow content. So if you have something that's really narrow, um, I would pitch them because they're looking right now. Yes. About thirty percent of their books are geared towards design, entertaining, and arts and crafts, you know, DIY sort of thing. So right now they're doing barns, for example. I F F right now they're looking for an author to write uh, on unique barns, barns oh. around the United States. Oh. So because they're always asking me, hey, do you know anyone that can get him provide on this type of? Thing? Shannon, are you, are you financing your own tour? Is that what you're saying? I am financing my own tour. Okay. Yes. That was my next question. How much would you say it has cost you personally to do this book? I've spent over 100000 Just you personally from the beginning to, mm -hmm. and that's before you start touring and all that? Yes. Okay. That was just for you to get the book, that fabulous, gorgeous looking book Thank that you. I am going to buy. Uh, Thank you. To 
the publisher to make it all start happening. Yes, and that's but with sponsors. Paying, you were paying people to do different things. I yes, but we did have product sponsors, but not all product sponsors. We had some product placement, okay. um, and, and if you buy the book, you'll, you'll their names are in here. Do you recommend practicing with Shutterfly and trying that? Do you think it would help or hurt you? And how big does it have to be? I see no reason not to do that. I mean, if you just want to make a portfolio, you know, for your design clients or your potential clients, they love seeing that printed and bound and looking professional. And there are so many tools at our disposal these days that we can use that aren't expensive thanks to the internet. What would you say you spent? Uh, what I spent on my book? Because you got some other people picked up some expenses. Yeah, so the photography was covered. Um, maybe, I mean, I do uh, 10 to 20,000. And that's low. I mean, I know the people. But you got other people. And, which yes, and some agents do charge up front. Uh, so there are agents who will charge you. And that is people, yeah, but it can be anywhere for you yeah. so, I mean, her number is actually more, much more typical of what it costs well, to do a book. What I was going to add to that, um, if you're blogging and you're Instagram, like these two have brands that they that they um, are known for. You know, Christopher, when I say California State of Mind, like that's very tied to who he is. Shayla, her Southern Glam, they both have design network shows. They they are what they speak, right? So if your blog, if you're consistent with your blog and, and you have beautiful imagery and your Instagram mimics that, these publisher like Schiffer that's hungry for content, they are actually, com they come to markets, they are scouting and looking for people. If you're on panels, you know, offer what's your point of view. You know, we have Michael Bauer here from Dallas Market. He's always putting on things. What is your point of view? What are you an expert at? Get to that. Maybe it's about where you're from. You know, like Barnes, you said. Maybe you've been passing Barnes your whole life. You know, start to, you know, I don't, just kind of like, you, you have to kind of think outside of the box sometimes. One more. Just, uh, in terms of the revenue stream then from any of these activities, blogging and writing a book, is it that you're making an investment in your brand so that you can acquire more clients? Or are you hoping to expand your brand so that then you're able to license things? And you know, like where, when you're building a business, mm -hmm. where is your, your main revenue stream? Or is it for, for self-respect self and self-fulfillment? That's the good answer. We're going to go with it. Is. I mean, obviously, obviously, I'm you know proud of what I've done, and it does make me feel fulfilled that I, yeah, you know, wrote these two books. But for me, it was sort of a bigger picture. It was just you know a piece in the puzzle that I felt I needed to put together as we launch products and and have more licensing deals. Um, my clients do like it. The, the first one was probably more client driven, but in and of itself is not really gonna pay for itself. It's the it's the bigger picture of what it does. Yes, it is. Yeah. Sure. I was wondering what advice you would give yourself about the process of self publishing. Where do you even start that? Uh sure, obviously how we did it, I when my uh, uh, agent publicist said you should do this. I called my graphic designer uh, in LA, who's wonderful, and he said, oh yeah, I know where you can have books printed in China. Um, uh, he already had most of my portfolio because he makes my website and other you know, marketing material, so what he didn't have, I, I sent him, and I just sent him all the photos. He laid it out beautifully, and Shayla, her graphic designer, uh, lay it out, and then he sent it to China, and he helped me get the ISN number, is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah, that sounds like it's yeah, so like that's, you that's, that's, see that, it. You know, yeah. The yeah. Congress number, he, yeah. there's a process you can do to apply for that. Okay. And he did that. And I don't know, three or four months later, this logo from China like literally <laughs> came. Like, you know, like literally these boats are on, these boats are on a slow yeah. boat from Asia. Yeah. Um, actually half of the, like a lot of the lead time in the year, like when Gibbs wanted me to have this out by February, we had to have it finished by October, literally because of the boats because they're not going to air freight books. Yeah. So, um, and then there's the port and customs and all that. So I, did I make that sound really simple? But it kind of was. I just had a graphic designer lay it out. I'm sure a little online research if you can find a printer yeah. overseas and, so you just and called it a day. Yeah. Search. Search. You know, well, no, I mean, well, I mean start, start with how to self-publish, but that's actually yeah. a topic that, you know, 
there's there's a couple of people but in this industry that I know that did it. Google book printer sign it. I made a real hard work. Yeah. Awesome. If not, I can turn it back on you. Write to me. Uh, yeah. yeah. But it kind of was pretty simple. Um, your photography, do you have a full-time photographer that works for you all the time, or did you use a variety of photographers, professional photographers? Is it for Shayla or for who else? Both. They choose the okay. so, I said, uh, so my stepbrother, I said, is a photographer and filmmaker, and the budget I was given by my publisher, uh, he was paid from them directly, and then he shot uh, my photos. My first book, no, I have just photographers that I use when I need someone to shoot a project. I don't know. I don't. I'm not that big of a team. We do not have a full-time photographer. Uh, but I wish I did. That's a great idea. I had the um, one photographer that did it so that her name can be on the front of the book. And then there's one chapter where another photographer shot, and she's a very close friend of mine. So we had really two photographers in the book. That came out of your budget or out of? The I did not pay for those photos. They, they, I, I marketed it to them as if you're going to be in a national book. Hey, let's team up. Oh, so they did it for yeah, you. So, yeah, so what she spent didn't even include photography, which is huge. Dude, that's that's crazy. Huge that's crazy. Yeah, our photography is expensive. <laughs> yes. Any yes, other? This is kind of random. Uh, obviously, as you guys were building your brand and getting your images published and stuff, have you, do you still get reached out on Instagram when they're like, Follow us, and you can just post your picture, and we'll like you know. What I'm saying they're always trying to hype you up if you pay them to post on their account. Like, do you feel like that's beneficial for designers that are coming up, or do you know what I'm talking about? Chris, where you're looking at me? I don't. Crazy. Yeah, no you're one like, asked what me. What are you talking about? You mean those Wait, people that like follow your social, social, social media? And well, stuff. and they're legitimate. Like they have you know a large following or whatever, but they want you to pay if you want to put some of your work on their Instagram account. Like, I wouldn't do it. it doesn't sound no. Strange. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was no. going to ask no. because I mean you have to when you're coming up you do need to like branch out and it is difficult to get your stuff seen where it needs to be seen. So I Collaborate, make friends in the industry. I think the most wonderful thing we can do is share each other's work. Not all the time, but share each other's work. Tag and make sure that the credits there. But I, I have a thing called Sharing Sunday, okay. where I'll share others' work. I. I just think that that's important that we do that. So just collaborate. I, as an editor, I agree. I, I love um, sharing, but I, oversharing is like for me to get to know who you are. I'm like, do they ever show any of their own work? Like, what are they doing? And that's also people that are looking for talent, and I'm looking for it. Um, and these book publishers, they, as as Cecil said in our issue, we do a, we have a licensing um, story. And he said, Cecil from Curry and Company, we're not looking for editors. Like, what you're doing there, and, and I, I think it's good, but you're uh, pulling out, you're curating the mix from yeah. everything else, but do it sparingly. That's why we sure, only go once a week. Yeah, and make sure that you do credit the original designer, that's the most important thing, and the yeah. photographer. Okay, we are, there's another panel here in our office. <laughs> so there's a book signing yeah, we'll in the lounge. So, yeah, so yeah. in the designer's lounge, uh, which you're just going to exit here, and you'll see a little sign. Uh, Christopher and Shayla will be in there. You can buy a book, you can get inside, you can have a conversation, you can stay for lunch. Take your time Thank you so it. much for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Jane.